Welcome aboard. Thank you for joining us on Joy News. Uh, this, uh, well, it's been some two days after the sad passing of former President Jerry uh, John Rawlings. We find ourselves in the home of Brigadier General Retired Nuno Mensah. He's been gracious enough to actually, you know, welcome us into his home today. He actually has been a two-time uh, Chief of Defence Staff, both under former President Rawlings. So if there is one man, one of those who actually know Rawlings very well, it would be Brigadier General Retired Nunu Mensah. We're going to be discoursing on uh, Rawlings, who he was, his personality, uh, what the fondest memories are with regard to who he was, and also other matters pertinent to the country. Ghana. Without further ado, let me say a very warm welcome to uh, Brigadier General Retired Nunu Mensah. Thank, thank you for hosting you, thank us. Thank you very much. You are most welcome. Great. Now, let's start with Ghana, the status quo in Ghana. Ghana then and Ghana now. What are the stark differences that you see? Because oftentimes we hear you talk about how we seem to have lost the plot. Where have we lost the plot? Thank you very much. I, let me go back to my early days in life. I'm 83 plus, so talking about early 1940s when I was growing up. Life was so leisurely. We grew up in Winneba, fishing. Life was, you know, was good. Food everywhere. Then grew up out of out of fishing village. Everybody was a fisherman. Went to school, somehow the first ever to go to school. Life wasn't easy, but it was beautiful. And then, of course, about 1948, 49, we had these troubles at the crossroads. Even though we didn't have much of, a, of news by way of radio and television and so on, we heard the news about a gate that being shot yeah. and killed, a bit of rioting in Accra. Yeah. Now, of course, Nkrumah came back from America in 1949, invited by, no, no, 48, by Akwaje yeah. to join the UGCC yeah. and then, you know, we had a struggle for independence. We were young, enjoying life. Everything was so beautiful. So Ghana has had a very cozy life over the period. Then, of course, the struggle for independence came. It, it actually intensified in the early 50s when we became leader of government business. Then by 1956, we were actually heading towards independence. Of course, Western Togo issue came up, but maybe you can come back to it later on. Ghana became independent in 1977, and everything was, you know, coasting pretty well. Come out an ambitious program to, I mean, that Ghana, Accra was, here, here was all bush, where we are sitting today. Accra stopped at Dankwa Circle, military barracks, at police headquarters. Osu was there, Labadi was there, but all here was, was uh, bush and so on. But Accra has grown very rapidly over the years, and of course we became independent. And everything began to develop very right. quickly. Right. And of course, that didn't make that cozy. Suddenly, all of a sudden, in about, and come out of problems from the opposition, mainly with the, um, it was more like left of center government, NPP, then NLM, they were right of center. So this clash. There was that friction. That friction had been there. Mm. NDC NPP friction had been now between the NPP and the and the NDC. But then before the there was MPP's godfathers, their predecessors and the CPP. It continues and Kuma never had an easy time. You know, and never had an easy time at all. He was doing well. But its African policy was something that frightened the, the um the Europeans. For example, De Gaulle, president of, of uh, France. Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle. Mm. They were exploding bombs in in the in 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 the Sahara Desert in in the, Algeria and come out opposed to all that. So he was never in the good books of the foreign powers. America, Kennedy became Eisenhower, then Kennedy, you know, and so on. So it has been doing pretty well. But as somebody who had lived over the period, look at the past and the person. In fact, something had not gone well. What exactly is it that hasn't gone well? When you, when you look at, you know, the Nkrumah era and what was done, mm -hmm. and when we get to the point where we are talking about that open letter mm -hmm. written by Reverend Christian Andrews, we shall That's get right. into some of them because you talk about the industry That's set right. up by That's Nkrumah right. and all of that. But what exactly is the difference comparing yes. then and now? What I've learned over the, over the long period of my life mm -hmm. It certain things have been the same. One thing I don't understand is that, and, and today it's not even Ghana alone. Look at America today. I get the impression that people take power, political power, 
and they behave as if the country is owned by them. We are in a democracy. But then it's a government of the people, by the people, for the people. The power rests with the people. And by voting, we give our power to whoever is elected as president or prime minister mm -hmm. of a country. Mm -hmm. However, when people assume power, and this is sometimes I've seen over the years, including in Chroma, the gate in Chroma. Right. And in Chroma brought a law, you may have read about the law, the PDA, right. preventive detention. Preventive detention. To me, it was a very bad law. Mm -hmm. A law that didn't give you the right to defend yourself. Right. As a bank general, you are accused of something, you are taken on someone and locked up. Right. I was, as a young officer, locked up somebody. So, and this has run throughout our history. Mm -hmm. Wizard came, the Salah case, I already read about it. Yes, I have. Five, so that every government over the period has behaved in a way which I don't think it was very democratic. But today I'm not surprised that even America is happening there. There's one feature that I've seen run through our life over the period. Let, let's, let's come to Ghana. Yes. I, I know you're talking about the United States and they have their own woes, but that's right. Yenzi, if you ask them, uh, let's that's come right. to Ghana. What, what are you seeing here that is undemocratic, that, is not, that does not fit into the fabric yes. of what we aspire to initially as a country? I have served many governments. I've served in the, uh, in the criminal government. I was a young officer, mm. so I didn't you know really uh, do much in terms of having authority to do anything. But when they came after in Crown, for example, we had the Buiza government. Then, of course, came the Achampon government. Mm. We have had military governments almost the same period as we have had civilian government. Unfortunately, mm. civilian governments haven't even behaved any better than military governments. We are supposed not to have, have, a, have a, a, dem, you know, a democracy. But even those who are, who are voted to power, for example, I'll give you an example of the of the second of the five six eight. Yeah. And um, yeah. if you come back if you come to let's 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 jump back and come to nineteen ninety two, the fourth Republican constitution. Right. I learned long ago that in the military, we don't flirt with politics. Mm -hmm. You are a servant of the state. Whoever the political authority in the land, you take orders from them. Mm -hmm. Which I understand pretty well. Perhaps today, today. There's no institution in Ghana which is not political, which is something which I decry. I really, really think it's a sad thing. Mm. There are some state institutions which should be allowed to perform for the state. And there are political institutions which be allowed to perform for the government in power. But we very often confuse the two. Right. And find that whoever is in power try to get his hand on for that one the media. Mm. You know, a paper like Daily Graphic should be a state uh, owned by the state. Are you suggesting in any way that they are not, that sometimes they get carried away? Because there are even, for example, when it comes to elections, yes. they are, they're supposed to be, um, you know, neutral. freedom, neutrality, yes, when yes, it comes yes, to yes, the yes, media yes, and yes. even their coverage, the Ghana yes, Broadcasting yes, Corporation yes, and all of that. And the, the NPP versus the GBC yes. is actually a case in yes. point on that. Yes. Are you suggesting all of these are not? It, it be, uh, it be, being it be like to? this for a long time, mm. which I don't think is the right thing to do. I mean, the military, for example, should be completely out of politics. Right. State institutions like the, like the news media, the, 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 the GBs, for example, mm. whoever is in power, try to get their hands and control them, which I don't mm. think, something which I don't know why we cannot take our hands off these institutions, allow them to perform the way they have been trained to perform. Right. And it doesn't advance our democracy, you know, in the right, right direction. Right. But I find this is, is unique to almost every government. And what is it now? Be, as I said, becoming even, even, even international. So this is in human nature that when the Nomen says chief of defense staff and seven Rawlings, I won't hand over power to Le Mans. Le Mans should dismiss him because he won't be loyal to him. I don't, I don't know how, where this comes from, mm. but it keeps on happening every now and then. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, and, 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 and that was your story. Yes. Because with the first coming of, uh, you know, flight lieutenant retired, Jerry yes. John Rawlings, yes. uh, may he so rest in peace. You were chief of defense staff, yes. and then the Liman government came, and then you lost your position. In other words, you were asked to step aside. Yes. And then with the second coming of yes. uh, former President Rawlings, yes. you were restored to that position. Yes. And you're decrying that. So, for example, the IGP yes. and others, you, yes. you expect that you know, we should have a framework to allow yes. them to stay yes. on. But our yes. very constitution gives those powers. to Having you know, encapsulated all of this, let's talk about the man Rawlings. You've experienced him uh, probably more than most people have on a very personal level. How would you describe the late former president? I think many people don't understand him. They don't know him. 
But there's a book, I don't know whether you've read this book. The book is entitled To Kill a Mocking Bird. To Kill a Mocking Bird. By Harper Lee. Harper Lee. I've read so many books. Mm. So many, I've read so many books. Mm. I believe said that if you want to understand Ben, go and stand where Ben is standing. Look at things the way Ben looks at them. Walk into, go into his body and walk around it to see real Ben. You understand the general is. Mm. People don't understand me. Who was he from your understanding of him? He was a man that believed in the African. And now they are some kinky, which is kinky. May he rest in peace, which regularly. And he said, who did it, Pepe? I said, my, a nephew of mine. Then I rang him. <laughs> then he called the man and said, look, I am fair, but I'm a boni. So Pepe, yeah, but yeah, be ni Pepe, not. <laughs> that is a man, raw and, and original. Mm. That's a man. Mm. But many people don't understand. For example, June 4th, he took an action on May 15th. People don't understand. But if you are coming from where I am standing and look at it, I will understand. We are done the same to two years earlier. That's a point time. And you saw it. There's something wrong with the, with, the, with the states, with the state of things in Ghana. We didn't see. We we're a bit blinded by. If you are driving Lankusa, you don't see that properly. If you are, if you are walking on the foot, and you take your gallery, you will see the thing he, he saw. Mm. What people. did he see? He saw the military getting rotten. And the pieces are written. I would have shown them that you don't have too much time. When a champion sees Power 72 and put the military into governance, it was a huge mistake. If you, you know, if you put, put, put a nice meat here, have a nice cut, put it there, it was sniffing, <laughs> sniffing. Why not with good meat? Don't let them, they're ordinary human beings. They're disciplined, but they can lose that dis discipline mm -hmm. and become ordinary. And that would mean it was a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Rollins saw that there was a decay mm -hmm. set into the military, mm -hmm. which I saw myself, which I saw. Did it warrant that action of taking over the state? What it did in 19, May, 15th May, wasn't, see, you were not there. I didn't understand what he was trying to say. He was trying to protest, that demonstrate that something wrong. Mm. He didn't know how to express that. Eight or eight or eight or nine men with him took to try to take action against the government. He knew he should have known that it won't it won't overthrow the government. Mm. But he, he went ahead and did it nevertheless. He was arrested. Well, it was a treasonable offence, mm. mutiny, and he would have been shot if the trial had been you know, seen through. Right. But the soldier said, ah, the trial was open trial in Bema Hall, not far from here. And he, he said to, to, the, to the trial panel, leave those men alone. I alone am responsible for the actions that the leader, what the leader does. And when the soldier heard, this man is going to be shot, eventually, then we allow that to happen. Big mutiny, a huge mutiny. Huge mutiny, I've never seen this before. Mm. Finally, all over here. And I understood. You see, you need to be seeing things from where you're seeing to understand what he did. Many don't understand Jerry Rollins. When you say you understand what he did, that you could see things from where he saw them, yes. the vantage point at which yes. he was, is that to say he was right? No, I wasn't going to do what he did. But we have different ways of reacting to him. If, if there's a fire, you will probably do something else. I will do something else. Right. So I wouldn't pin him down. But even, even, even on, 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 on 5th, 4th of June, when he was in prison, people accused him of leading, he didn't lead the revolution. He was brought to lead the revolution. He was in prison. They brought him from, from somewhere whatever he yes. was, in the cells. Yes. And they said, be a leader. Look, if you have been pushed like that before, Ben, it's not a joke. On 31st of December, I was in my farm near, near Hacho. It would be a good, I'm a good farmer, fisherman, I, I do everything. Then I had my name on radio, that I was called to report to Gonda Barracks by six o'clock. Mm. I didn't know what was going on, how to, how to find what the hell was going on. When I, I reported eventually in the evening, a soldier hit my chest with the butt of a rifle. He said, why have you come so late? Look, it's not a joke. Revolution is not a tea party, it's a serious business. Right. So, if Warren did something, mm. try, and, try and pity him a little bit. He has a young 33 year old. How would you, John, uh, uh, Ben? I would rather not mention. Don't mention. He was a man 32 years, Air Force. He had no idea about what to do. Mm. 
yet you are propelling to leadership position mm. to run a country. So may, maybe youthful exuberance as well, a bit of that in there. I don't think he knew, and he was clever enough to, I was a prisoner on June 4th, mm. but he called me, Jinamidu, I just talked to, talk to Jinamidu, I'm sure, I hope you'll be listening to us, Jinamidu, Evans Machabwachi, Dr. Uh, Joe Abi, do you know him? No, I don't. It, it's very quiet, I'm trying to get in trouble, I can't get a hold of him. Uh, Evans Machabwachi, we were prisoners, but we were running the government on his behalf. He knew that he wasn't equipped to run Ghana. There was confusion. How can they keep their standstill? Well, so, at least we've, we've had some leaders say, like Malema, Julius Malema, who would say that if you can't do it, you surround yourself with people who can. And, yes. and supposedly that yes. is what yes. Rawlings did. So on, on this bit about the man Rawlings, now that he's passed, there's a lot of flowery speeches. There are a lot of them that are being delivered, and he was this and he was that. But let's delineate, I mean, yes. candidly, yes. what were the good and the bad yes. when it comes to Rawlings? I've spoken quite a lot about the good things Rawlings did. Mm. Unfortunately, I cannot help you too much talking about negative side of him. And it's mm. very simple. For a man to be 32 years old, to run a country, mm. is no mean achievement. He made certain, for example, for example, people blame him. You know why? Toward the end of his life, I was with him just before he died. Mm. He had a bit withdrawn. He was, he was thinking back, what had, as if he knew his end was coming. What he had come to do, whether he had succeeded or not. I think he was showing remorse that he had failed to achieve the objective of his three times attempt to make this country a better place. And I think that if we were to live today and see young people, women they see without jobs, we would have known he has failed. Because, and I was trying to explain this to, to other people, they didn't I, I, I agree with me. When, I mean, I, I need somebody about media. I say, Ben, come and help me. I'm not a media man. I have my expertise in the military. Mm. I told me to call me one day. When I, 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 they are avoiding uh, crisis cave, he said, yeah, okay. I'm not a soldier. I don't know how to shoot. Now you are my advisor. You tell me, what should I do? Do you fear something? So there are one call experts in law, in economics, to, and then they go and hop up with the IMF and World Bank. And the country is in a mess. Well, he take the blame. But you should understand why you are an, you are an expert. You're talking about structural adjustments, yes, the economy, the failures, yes, 1983, yes. and all the yes. problems, and the Rawlings chain, yes. and all and of they, that. They blame but it, blame, some blame it on him, which is true. But, but won't you blame a leader when things are no, not going well? When things blame. go well, you, 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 you lot the, them. The, when the, things the, don't go well, you blame the them. The leader must carry the can. Right. The leader must carry the can. Mm. I agree with entirely. Mm. But you should understand why he failed to achieve the objective of what he tried to do. Why? And I said that if you, you, you choose, some said he was naive. Of course, of course, you must trust somebody. I don't want to mention any names here. Mm. To come and help you. I mean, if today Goom becomes uh, Goom uh, with power, if I thought Ben was good enough to become Minister of Information, why not? Mm. So, and he would do that. Mm. So if whoever you call fail you, you have probably failed in, in your judgment of that person. So but, it is not Rawlings who failed, it is those around him who failed no, him. he failed. Mm. He failed, but I'm not explaining why he failed. Right. No, he failed to address that issue with unemployment among the youth. It's worse right. today. Right. And I think that toward the end of his life, he used to be quite, you know, quite withdrawn. Mm. Thinking about this, and it was as if he knew the end was near. You know, so for choosing the wrong people, some of them, not all of them, I, wasn't, I don't think I was the wrong person, but I left him. I left Who him. are some of these wrong people? I don't want to mention names here. I don't want to have any controversy. But if you say you were, if, you, if, you, if, you were not one of the wrong people, then it if, means you know some of these wrong if, people. If the economy of today, if you went with the IMF, World Bank, and we failed, whoever handled those issues at the time, they have let him down. Have we as a, a country been fair to the former president? I, you get two sides to the man. And you get it with everybody. Even <laughs> Trump, who had lost the election, he has 72 million people voting for him. Mm. So he hasn't failed. The Democrats, the government of the majority. Mm. Doesn't mean the minority have no case, but listen to that case. So. Have we been fair to Rawlings? You will get this reaction from 
various areas of, you know, some people who hate him, hate him intensely. Mm -hmm. Those who love him will die for him. Mm -hmm. I went to Winneba, what is, when was this? Not long, very long ago. Not very long ago. He came to Winneba, and if you know Winneba quite well, after Winneba, the road goes into, like, why, why jump it? When Nkrumah came to Winneba, 1951, in March, I was in boarding school. There's a big almond tree there. And I climbed that tree, like Zacchaeus in Jerusalem, when Christ came to Jerusalem. And when he got there, for some reason, he got down from the car and started walking to, toward the town. And I remembered Nkrumah in those days, as a young boy, 13, 14 years old. And a woman came to hold the leg and kiss his leg, an old lady. Wow. An old lady came from the crowd, held Ronnie's leg, and kiss the leg. These are very emotional things. So don't let the vilify. Look, he's a human being, and to err is human. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect. Mm -hmm. he, he has his downs and his ups and so on. But let's grant him that he achieved something. And let's highlight what he achieved. Right. Integrity. Mm -hmm. You know, patriotism. The man will go into Gata Inima and kill the Gata mm -hmm. to tell you and I that we should be doing that. What would be your fondest memory of him? Eating can kill with him. I mean, <laughs> We sit down. No, no. We just take our shirts off. No, well, uh, COVID-19 or whatnot. And we enjoy and talk. Mm. You know, we have had our, our, our uh, bad moments. I resigned from the government. Right. But I didn't blame him for why I resigned. Mm. I didn't like the system. You may not like somebody, but the system today, actually, how I went to the, the GUM party and left the NDC, left the MPP. Well, I believe that they have nothing good to serve. To, to give to this country. Right. That's why I left. Some have said that, you know, to, to immortalize the man rollings, yes. uh, maybe people should vote for the NDC. Uh, do you subscribe to that? No, no, if, I mean, I, will, I, will, I don't want to say it. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, let's have, have people of brains. Like we are developing. Mm. Even illiterates should look at their state and say, is the NDC and people going to offer me anything? Right. For, for Rawlings, I should go and vote for NDC. You know, that, that makes sense. There are many things every government has. I can, I can point out many of them. Mm -hmm. Why I don't like the NDC, why I don't like the MPP. Right. And if tomorrow, Reverend, I know Reverend uh, will not, he, he will not do it. I went to Rawlings with him mm -hmm. not long ago. About Reverend Andrews. Month. Yeah, mm -hmm. Reverend Andrews. I always said to him, if the general has joined your party, give time to God. That's if what Rawlings said. Yes. If this man had joined you, you can ask him. The Yami has Oh, Yami He has seen something in me. You know, there's something which he saw in me years ago. And he always talks about it. In those days, you were a major. I was a lieutenant. You saw a major run away. So just, just two ranks. The brigadier general. So a huge gap between him and me. And they fear to come close to us. He said something happened, and I spoke to him like a human being. He never forgot that. That stayed with him until his death. As we wrap up, this will be our final bit. Now, beyond the state burial, how do we ensure that flight lieutenant retired Jerry John Rawlings, now deceased, is remembered in the proper way, that we immortalize him fittingly? To me, the way to immortalize Jerry John Rawlings, the things he preached to change Ghana, the things he preached, the patriotism, the integrity of the man, the sincerity and the honesty of the man. Mm. If we can do that, we are mortalizing him. Because those ideals will live long after him. That to me, they will not to build monuments that running statue here and there. If we didn't do what he said we should do, we are wasting our time. General, it's been refreshing uh, discoursing with you. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. And this has been our conversation with uh, Brigadier General Retired Joseph Nunumensa, two-time Chief of Defense Staff under Rawlings, also Security Advisor under the Atta Mills Administration. And he has been sharing his thoughts among uh, myriad matters on Rawlings, the former president, and you know statehood uh, here in Ghana, and some matters that ought to be addressed. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll bring you more when it comes to uh, General Nunu Menza. He has told us that he'll be granting us more <laughs> interviews. Thank you for joining us.